Hoe word je president van de Verenigde Staten? Dat ga ik onderzoeken door mijn kandidaat te stellen voor het presidentschap. We want that Obama special. Do you see how much meat that is for one small woman? En dan hoor ik u denken, dat kan helemaal niet. Want hij is in Nederland geboren en als je niet in Amerika bent geboren, kom je niet in aanmerking. Daar heb ik een oplossing voor. Well, what a time to have a black man who in the office, he's gonna mess it up. But in fact, he saved it. Ik ben namelijk van plan om Nederland tot de 51ste staat van de Verenigde Staten te maken. En als dat geslaagd is, dan kom ik ook in aanmerking voor het presidentschap. How do you feel? Not particularly comfortable. En in de loop van deze wonderlijke zoektocht zal duidelijk worden dat die Amerikaanse presidentsverkiezingen bepaald een zonderlinge aangelegenheid zijn. Als je president van de Verenigde Staten wil worden, doe je er verstandig aan eens te kijken hoe andere presidenten dat hebben gedaan. Detroit, ooit het hoofdkwartier van de Amerikaanse auto-industrie. Maar Detroit is in verval geraakt. De auto-industrie is grotendeels verdwenen uit de stad. En de helft van de bevolking is ook vertrokken uit de stad. En het leek eigenlijk of Detroit niet meer te redden was... totdat president Obama heeft besloten om met behulp van tientallen miljarden... Chrysler en General Motors op de been te houden. Hier arriveren we bij een dankbare Chrysler dealer. Welkom, Mark. Mr. Cohen. Yeah, very nice to meet you. Ja, It's a pleasure. Ja. Welkom to our dealership. What would have happened to you if Obama hadn't saved the auto industry? Well, we probably wouldn't be here. Really? Oh, yeah. That I mean, would be the end of your dealership? It would have been the end of and our 300 employees, too. Uh -huh. And it was uh, obviously... We're 300 employees? 300 employees at our dealerships. Okay. We have 150 here. So you're very thankful? Very thankful. Okay. To both President Bush and President Obama. Okay. And, uh, and the taxpayers of the U.S. and Canada. Yeah. Good. Are you going to vote for Obama because of his saving of the motor industry? I would vote for you. Good. Good. That, that, that I think is an even more diplomatic answer. Uh, you vote for, vote for me. Or a uh, Dutchman running for the presidency of the United States. Ah, wat een prachtig dashboard. Een kunstwerk is het. Een kunstwerk. Kijk. Wonderful sound. Wonderful. So sometimes you take it for a spin on Sunday morning. Absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. Dit is de Chrysler Airflow, een fantastische auto uit de jaren 30. Maar omdat autokopers uilskuikens zijn, is het geen groot succes geworden. Chrysler is nu overgenomen door Fiat. Kortom, David heeft Goliath verslagen. Do you now feel slightly European because you're a taken over by Fiat and selling these, these Fiat 500s is like hotcakes? I just am very thankful that we're all together. Um, okay. I mean, in, in today's auto industry, it's good to have Fiat because you know what? The European market, I think, is somewhat soft. It sure is, yeah. We're, we're, we're doing well here. Yeah. And there are times when the uh, vice versa yeah, happens. Yeah, I think Fiat's making far more profits now in the American market than it does in, yeah. the, in the European market. And that's good for everybody. Yeah. It, it helps. And that is actually the, the the center of my political program as a presidential <laughs> candidate, that Western Europe and the United States should team up together mm -hmm. and learn from each other. Thank you so much, Martin. It's been a pleasure yeah. having you visit us. It's a great, a great to see all these cars driving the Chrysler Airflow. And now in the Fiat 500. 500. I look forward to having your presidential limousine awaiting uh -huh. you. Do you think it, that a presidential candidate can drive a Fiat 500? Uh, especially you. Absolutely. With your platform of America and Europe together. Okay. Uh, you know, I think it's a, the perfect, perfect car for you. Damn. Je zou dat kunnen beschouwen in ieder geval ook als een signaal van de Europeanisering van de Verenigde Staten. 
Die maakt nog geen geweldige vorderingen. Laten we daar nou helemaal geen illusies over laten bestaan. Maar het is misschien een begin. En ach, het rijdt best lekker. Kijk, hoe is het mogelijk? En wat stapt erin? Een, een trotse, modieuze jonge man. Dus, dus hè, niet een of andere kneus of zo. Nee, een trotse, modieuze jonge man. Dus dit, uh, dat heeft wel toekomst. Want wat rijdt erachter? Een, een Mustang met een crimineel achter het stuur. De president moet natuurlijk veilig van A naar B kunnen komen. En die Fiat 500 is vreselijk leuk vanuit mijn perspectief. Maar in dat autootje kun je in feite de president al met een katapult vermoorden. Dus wat we nodig hebben is zo'n reusachtige Amerikaanse auto. Zo'n slagschip van de weg. Een Cadillac of een Lincoln. Mr. Lucci. Sir, how are you? Nice yeah, to meet well. you. Nice to meet you. You are the world authority on presidential limousines. I would say I'm an amateur historian on presidential limousines. I've designed some armored cars. I, I was in the security industry for a while, private security. Done a lot of executive protection work, and uh, these have become a fascination, so to speak. Okay. Would this car live through an attack by handheld rockets, things like that? No. There's no way to, a president today could be in this car. These cars were built primarily to protect long enough to evade and get out of the situation. Mm -hmm. Today, the, um, the presidential limousine is like a tank, literally a cocoon, a uh, pressurized environment inside with its own oxygen. Uh, it's actually a kind of aeroplane on wheels. Correct, absolutely, without question. Because it was used actually quite a long time. I mean, they started using it under Nixon. Correct. And it was still used by Bush Sr. 1992 is when it was officially retired. It was delivered to President Ford. It started under Nixon, was delivered under Ford. It was the car that um, most historically Ronald Reagan was inaugurated in. We now see the Secret Service men and the traditional running along the side when the car is moving this slowly. And then the assassination attempt on Ronald Reagan. Um, in um, March of 1981. They, they threw Ronald Reagan into the car. Yes. And, and then a secret servant agent jumped upon him. It was a good display of tactics, the tactic differences back then. If you look at that footage, you have a secret service agent that spreads his body and he shields the president and he takes a shot to the abdomen. And in this situation, the suicide door opened backwards and President Reagan had been shot in the armpit by a ricocheting bullet. The theory is if the door was not a suicide door, he would not have had even the, the protection he had. He probably would have died. Correct. So because uh, they want to make sure that, that your chauffeur is, is totally trained with evasive tactics, he has to do what's called a J-turn. And every Secret Service agent is trained to take a car this big, which is about 9,800 pounds, or eight, uh, this one's I think 8,000 pounds, and be able to turn it 25 miles an hour to the rear and then do an immediate J to get you into the opposite direction. This is the Kennedy car. This is the Kennedy car. Was he? This is the Kennedy Lincoln. Another Lincoln, isn't it? Yes. Okay. This is? This is the car in which he was killed? Correct. This car was built as a, as a convertible. It was built with roof sections that could come off for maximum visibility. And that obviously has changed because of the assassination. Yeah, in, the, in a sense, all the presidential limousines after Kennedy are built like tanks or aeroplanes because of Correct. Kennedy's murder. Correct. The parade limousine was meant for maximum visibility. Back in the day, Truman, FDR, they had open top parade limousines. That went away with Dallas. Kennedy zat daar rechts achterin toen hij doodgeschoten werd. Hij was niet direct dood, maar het, het was toch evident afgelopen. Nou zie ik daar een gaatje zitten in de bekleding, maar ik neem nou maar even aan dat dat geen kogelgat is. 
dat dat mijn romantische verbeelding is. Maar hij zat rechts achterin. Ja, u ziet direct, dit is pure flauwekul. Maar dit is gedaan voor de kijkcijfers en omdat de makers dol zijn op lollige visuele elementen. Maar nogmaals, dit is scherts. Chicago, mochten we kuifje geloven, is de stad van de maffia. Dat valt tegenwoordig nogal mee, volgens mij. In deze stad is Obama begonnen met zijn politieke carrière. En anders dan enige andere president is hij begonnen als sociaal werker. En het is een zekere kunst naar mijn idee om van sociaal werker president te worden. En de vraag is, hoe heeft hij dat gedaan? Wat waren de eigenschappen die hem zo ver hebben gebracht? Mr. President, welcome to Obama land. Thank you. Pleasure to have you here. I thought we'd start our program uh, here at Hutchinson Field, where the uh, election night celebration was watched around the world with uh, great anticipation and excitement about a a new young president. It's been a long time coming, but tonight, because of what we did on this day, in this election, change has come to America. Oh, it was extraordinary. There were probably close to a half a million people in the park, on the surrounding streets. Every Everything was close to traffic, and uh, it was a very joyful night. So I thought it was a good starting point for us this morning. I was standing with a, a group of people who probably ranged in age from young children whose parents wanted yeah. to be sure that they had this moment, to people in their 80s and 90s who, uh, especially African American, who've waited their whole lives to see something uh, so so groundbreaking. I will never forget who this victory truly belongs to. It belongs to you. It belongs to you. This is your victory. In Chicago, he's still very much a hero. I mean, he's our hometown boy. Well, Other think, than Hawaii, yeah. this was his really permanent home. I think he's a likable hero. He's a he's lovely a cool man. hero. And smart. Yeah, I think so. Chicago is a sports town. You know, Obama's a huge fan. That's the only point where I disagree with Obama. Oh, are you a I'm Cub not fan? a huge sports fan oh, at all. Oh, no, He's, he is a diehard White Sox fan, and they're number one in the country right now. Uh, the Obamas were married in 1992, and again, he had completed uh, dreams of my father, now had a, a good job at a law firm. Michelle is working at a firm. They're, they're quite a successful, young, you know, up-and-coming young couple, and they buy a condominium uh, to move into. Uh, he had been living in a very small one-bedroom apartment just three blocks west of here. So they've spent you know, a, a good part of their adult life right in this neighborhood. They lived here for four years before they bought the Kenwood Mansion, and that was 1.4 million. So things were looking really good by then, obviously. And uh, it's, but it's quite a substantial property. I mean, it's very estate-like. Even if you didn't know it was Obama's house, you'd get, guess that someone fairly special mm. must live with all the barricades and Secret Service and you know all the police protection that surround the uh, the building. It's far for the climate, I could live here. Actually, the climate is very interesting because it always changes, so you were never bored. You know, we have a glorious, cold, miserable winters and, and uh, very hot, as you see, steamy summers. I, I think when I'm elected, I will live in the Netherlands. It's probably a good idea. Because the Dutch climate is really the greatest in the world. Mm-hmm. Als president heb je in feite geen normaal dagelijks leven. Je moet voortdurend bewaakt worden. En om nou eens te kijken hoe dat in zijn werk gaat, heb ik een particulier beveiligingsbedrijf in de arm genomen... wat gevestigd was op een nogal ongure plaats... maar dat hoeft op zichzelf geen anti-reclame te zijn. Hallo, Mr. President. How are you? Hallo. Excellent. Nice to meet you, sir. Hi, de Volsen. Commander Dale Brown, Threat Management Center. This is Falcon 102. And he is our medical team member... Trained in emergency medical medicine. This is 116 Kodama. He's the next team member. And he's in charge of all electronics, cyber logistics, anything dealing with communications and computers. 
M111. She handles all of our logistical issues, uh, as well as advancing and, and environmental conditions, making sure that everything is the way it's supposed to be before we arrive. The security of, let's say, the President of the United States, they're all in, in, in suits. Yes. Most generally black or gray suits. Right. And, and you, you're really looking prepared for a civil war. Yes. Uh, no, more like a uh, tactical warfare. But suppose I become president. Yes. Would you then would you then be still clothed like this, or would definitely you... always tactical? Deze zonderlinge lieden zouden het goed gedaan hebben in een moderne versie van Kuifje in Amerika. En ik ben er zeker van dat we niet onopvallend op pad kunnen met ze, maar ik geef ze toch maar het voordeel van de twijfel. All right. So one of the things uh, we can do, if you like, we can do a drill right now. If you want to step over there and have a seat. Guns. Lots of training in this area. Okay. This is how we train to protect you properly. When the vehicle stops, I'm going to say, please wait here, sir. I'll be right with you. He's going to get out at the same time. Uh -huh. He's going to go forward, check the area. When he sees the area is clear, he's going to give me the clear sign. That's how I know everything's fine. Then I'm going to open the door and say, right this uh -huh. way, sir. And I'm always going to stand between you and approaching possible areas of danger, which would be here in this case. Okay. Then we'll proceed forward, right this way, sir. And we'll follow this gentleman here. Did shake your hand, oh. and you wanted to get their hand away from you. you. You just gave me the look. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna push his thumb, and he's gonna let your hand go, and I'm gonna walk in in front of you while another team member walks you away. I'll just talk to him and, and make sure that it doesn't turn into an incident mm -hmm. so that it doesn't hit the media. And if Meanwhile, what, what do you do if he starts crying? Ah. If he starts freaking out, what we're going to do is administer first aid. Um, Yelling, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if he did that, we would take a uh, cloth, place it over his face, take him down to the ground and begin to rescue him yeah. uh, because he's having some type of seizure. And therefore, the crowd will think of us as heroes as opposed to someone who's grabbing a person who's out of control. Are you willing to yell later on? Or? I will yell. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. Hey, this works. As you put this right over top of your head. And it, traditionally, it, it, this goes it stops back. a bullet. Yes, it stops bullets. Even rather large bullets. Large bullets up to, um, this is a level three. So it'll take um, uh, AK-47s. Oh, okay. Yes, okay. very strong. Yes, sir. Okay. And then we're going to wrap this around. It's quite heavy. A kogelvrije vest. Dat ik dat toch ooit om zou hebben. Dat had ik echt helemaal nooit van mijn leven gedacht. Very well, sir. Ja, How do you feel? Is not particularly comfortable. I was wondering what this, what this blowpipe is on, on your back. What? This right here? Yeah, that one. This is a baton. Oh. And okay. what this does is allows us to move people away without hurting them. And if it's a crowd and they're still rushing us, we'd still be able to protect you using this baton. Okay, but if, if they are hit with it, then they, are, they have been hurt. They're definitely going to be hurt. Uh -huh. It's a good non-lethal device. Oops. Roman de Brown heeft mij beloofd mij onopvallend af te zetten bij een chic hotel in het centrum van Detroit. Obama heeft gestudeerd aan Harvard, een Amerikaanse topuniversiteit, maar dat heeft hij niet omgezet in een dure advocatenpraktijk. Hij is in de achterbuurten van Chicago aan de slag gegaan voor de kansarmen. The program is basically designed to provide and educate the community around about healthy foods. About healthy foods, exactly. Okay. We specialize in collard greens, tomatoes, and um, other kinds of vegetables that appeal to African American communities. Was Obama a good social worker? I mean, he would not want to be considered a social worker because in community our community organizer com yes. was he a good community he, organizer? Uh, yes, I think so. Um, I think that um, if the, the 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 best, he was the best communicator, the best relationship builder I ever I've ever seen. I mean, he was able to build relationships with people from, you know, um, poor as well as wealthy backgrounds. He was able to, you know, uh, get people to, to 
believe in them, to believe in themselves and to, to work and to do things. When you look at him as, as president, do you remember him as a social worker, as a colleague? Uh, yes. It, it, has he changed? Yes. He has changed? Yes. In what way? He's much, much more statesmanlike. Okay. He wasn't particularly statesmanlike. Well, I mean, he, he was, but, you know, I, he, he, he was a little looser, you know? Mm -hmm. A little looser and, a little, you know, now well, when I see him, I mean, he's always on point, okay? I mean, I, I, I've not seen the guy that I knew, you know, um, since he's been elected. Well, in fact, since he's been running for office, you know. Do you think Obama's going to be reelected? I, I certainly hope so. I'm, I'm a little bit concerned. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, in fact, I'm deeply concerned. Let okay. me just put it We'll simply. be in close, close election. Yeah, it'll be close. I mean, um, they, they forget that he actually saved our economy. When the man came into office, this country was on the brink of disaster. Yeah. The, the, the people were thinking, oh, a black man, wow, what a time to have a black man who's in the office. He's going to mess it up. But in fact, he saved it. He saved us. He saved the, per the pocketbooks of many, many millions of people. He saved the major automobile corporation and all those jobs. I suppose that sometimes you're sitting on a couch at home mm -hmm. and, and you see the president, Barack Obama, on television. And, and aren't there, are there situations where you start talking to him and say, well, Barack, why don't you say this, or why don't you do <laughs> so and so? Oh, or, yeah, you, yeah, you do? definitely. Yeah, I mean, you know, like, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, especially when there's some big debate going on or something like that. And, you know, you'll sit there and you're like, uh, don't, you know, make sure you say this or uh, okay. watch out for this or, you know. Yeah, definitely. And it, it's, it's really intriguing to be, in, you know, able to, see someone that you had that kind of relationship with yeah. in that setting. It's, it's surreal in, in, yeah, in many ways. I can understand that. Yeah. 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 I actually uh, was saddened when he, actually, when he went to Harvard and, and decided he to disappeared. move. Disappeared. Yeah, basically. I mean, because Did you ever hear from him since that time? Since he went to Harvard? Or since he's in the White House? No, I haven't. Okay. Mm -hmm. no. Ja, Obama ziet zijn oude kennissen niet meer, maar hij laat zich nog wel eens fotograferen in wat ooit zijn favoriete lunchrestaurant was, Manny's genaamd. Is there anything that is not going to kill me within 20 minutes? You're going to die happy though, because okay. the food is so delicious, all homemade, enormous portions, so this is a good place enormous to have a friend portions. and to share something. Is there anything small that I can order? Um, you can make it small by dividing it up, but everything is, they're what known for their excellent okay. stack high sandwiches. What should we divide up? I think you should have the Obama special. Als je wil weten waarom Amerikanen dik zijn in Wol, dan, dan loop je gewoon langs deze balie en dan weet je precies hoe het zit daar. A huge corned beef on rye we're going to share. Potato pancake and a pickle. How are you? I'm great. We want that Obama special. Now all we need is a, is a cherry pie and we are Obama. Een lichte lunch in Chicago. Elke dag zo'n lichte lunch en al heel snel moet je met een vrachtauto van je huis worden opgehaald en naar je werk worden gebracht en dan s'avonds weer op worden gehaald. Oh my goodness. I actually need your I, Do you see how much meat that is for one small woman? Zo zit hij nu al tien minuten te wachten in een stervenshete auto. Terwijl de jihadisten waarschijnlijk bezig zijn om de, om de raketwerpers te installeren en op ons te richten. Jongen, 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 wat zeg ik? Het zou me niet verbazen als de kandidaat zou overlijden door oververhitting.
So assuming you're elected president, this is the car I would recommend for you. Uh -huh. uh, this is a cutaway of the latest Obama car. This vehicle is made out of not only titan steel, but titanium, because from a weight perspective, you have to, to compromise armoring with the actual ability to move the vehicle. How heavy is this one? Uh, the rumor is it's about 14,000 pounds. That's seven tons? Correct. This is not a, an off-the-shelf sedan. This car was built from the ground up, and it is actually built on a modified truck chassis. Now, you can imagine that the president wouldn't really look good riding oh, around I in that. Would, I think I would prefer this one as a presidential vehicle. You could get more in the back. Yeah, you, and you could armor it, and it, it looks nice, I think. However, the, this is the actual f frame, yeah. and yeah. believe it or not, those tires are the same size as over here. Uh -huh. Now, when you look at how tall this car is, these agents, this gentleman here I know really is, is, in a fact, truck. his it's six... It's a truck. It's a truck. This car also has its own oxygen supply. Uh, in addition to its own oxygen supply, this is a pressurized cabin vehicle, meaning that it is just like a jet plane. It has its own oxygen supply. It also has some defense mechanisms. We can only surmise what they are, but I would surmise... Machine guns? Uh, well, those would be... Rocket launchers? Uh, um, no, those would be in the follow-up car. Uh, in any motorcade, you have what you call the hard car, which which is the president's car, known as the Beast. And then you have what's called the War Wagon. And the War Wagon is an SUV behind it, but, and it usually has the machine guns and all those. But nobody exactly knows what they have. Correct. You can make the assumption that they are wearing body armor and they have sniper rifles. Um, they have probably anything that could be shot at this car, they could return. He always <laughs> used it also in foreign countries, doesn't Oh, gosh, it? absolutely. It's flown to absolutely. wherever he goes. There's two limousines that are always flown in a C-130 with all of his backup vehicles. Did you see the wonderful scene where it, it kept kind of hanging in It got caught in England, yeah. yes, yes. You, that, see that you saw yes, that? Yes, I saw that. That was probably kind of not the Secret moment. Service's <laughs> finest moment. No, but they should have been prepared. Correct. It was quite, quite difficult to get it over the, the hump or whatever it was. <laughs> There's a rumor that also Obama's blood is on board so that when something happens, he can get his own blood. The, the Secret Service absolutely carries pints of the president's blood. I doubt they're kept in the trunk of his limousine. They're probably kept with the doctor and follow-up vehicles. Uh -huh. And I know that every There's hospital, always a doctor always. following him. Always a doctor, always a doctor available. And if I, I wanted to drive it myself, say... No, uh, sir, I want you... to have this wonderful driving experience. M Mr. President, you wouldn't be allowed to drive it yourself. Never. No, you would travel with a doctor. Not, not even around the White no, House. No, maybe around the White House, sir, but I don't think they would allow it out in the public. Zero one Delta. One that's talking online. Currently McDougal and Larned. Acknowledged. I got you. Ze zijn elkaar kwijtgeraakt en nu rijden we weer terug om om de chef op te pikken. Nou ja, dat lijkt me eerlijk gezegd geen signaal van uh, extreme competentie. I haven't been speeding, sir. Just, just driving. You said you were ready, sir. Nou ja, nu hebben ze elkaar weer opgepikt, maar dat is toch een vrij aardige toestand. Ik ben hier veilig aangekomen, maar de beveiliging was prutswerk. Ik had eigenlijk beter op de fiets kunnen gaan. Dan was het waarschijnlijk sneller gegaan en het was zeker niet onveiliger geweest. Een echt wit huis. Was the asking price for the house? It used to be 5 million. Right now it's about 4 million. Okay. Okay. I'm thinking about 3 billion. Probably you're going to have to shave your beard. And, oh, yeah. and pull your shoulders back and mm. um, so that as you eat, 
you're sort of in control. Okay. I've heard that my whole life. First, the first two were the best. Yeah.